Why are the markets puking? Why is everybody gripped with fear? Well, it's a story of the yen. But the yen is not the whole story. The story is actually much bigger. You see, what's been happening is we have needed stimulus into the global economy because the economy has been slow. The ISM survey has been bumping along the bottom. China's slow. Europe's slow. And you see, one of the component parts that allows for this all to move hadn't really been playing ball. Firstly, it was US rates, but the Fed gave us that signal. So that started moving. But the big one is King Dollar. In a recent interview on The Journeyman with Raul Pal, we gain insights into his perspective on the current market turmoil, highlighting the critical role of the yen in the market's decline and the strength of the US dollar. Pal offers an eye-opening analysis of the yen's dramatic collapse, the US dollar's unprecedented strength, and the resulting impact on global markets. After a turbulent weekend, Bitcoin is trading around $52,000, with a staggering 10% drop in the last 24 hours and an 8% decline over the past month. With 19.74 million bitcoins in circulation, the scarcity factor is intensifying. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. The dollar has been strong, and a strong dollar is a tighter financial conditions, which doesn't help markets and doesn't help economies. You see, at this point in the cycle, when there's no inflation, or inflation is falling fast, generally, you need a weaker dollar. That brings global growth. So if you remember, Janet Yellen, went to China twice um, earlier in the year. Those conversations, I believe, were about how we can allow China to stimulate without sacrificing the yuan. You see, if China had stimulated with the dollar strong, the yuan would have collapsed, and they can't deal with that. They really want to keep their currency stable. So they will have said to the the US, we get it, we need to stimulate, we've got a debt deflation going on, but we can't stimulate, you need to help us. And Yellen would have said, of course, what can I do? And the answer is, well, obviously, you need to cut rates. And that's like, yes, we understand that, that's on the cards. But then it's like, you must weaken the dollar. So cut to the Bank of Japan. The Bank of Japan is the big player in all of this. And the Bank of Japan had been suffering from a weaker and weaker yen and the stronger and stronger dollar and had started to make noises that it wanted to do something about it. So the 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 Japanese banking market is the euro dollar market. It's the global lending of dollars really comes out of Japan. And Japan didn't really have enough dollars. So what they had to do, um, sorry, the world doesn't have enough dollars. So Yellen will have spoken to the Japanese as will a Powell, and the idea is this, is listen, you intervene in the currency, that's injecting of liquidity. Help us start lowering the dollar. You can be the big driver here because this is how you operate your currency system. We will reciprocate by cutting rates. And the Chinese will be able to stimulate their economy without losing control of their currency. That's something I wrote about for a while, and I've talked about that this was the big plan. So we started to see yen intervention. Now, the thing about the yen, as as the Japanese also raise rates, the thing about the yen is that a lot of people borrow in the currency because it's cheap, and then they invest in other assets. It's called the funding trade. And that's all well and good, and it can deal with normal volatility. But once the Japanese started to intervene in the currency, it starts knocking people out of their positions. Those positions become less profitable. So what happens is they are forced to reduce risk. In banks, it's called VAR and hedge fund, which is value at risk. So if the currency moves a lot, they're funding currency, or in fact, any major currencies, what they have a tendency to do is start having to liquidate other positions. That started knocking into the NASDAQ, riskier assets, as people start reducing the higher volatility positions, and it knocks all the way through the chain of all assets. That's why you get this correlation of one event when everything moves together, when they weren't correlated before. It's because everybody's forced to puke risk at the same time. 
So the wrist puking had started and then really started to gather steam. Now, for all of us, this is like, what the f- are you doing? You're nuking my bags. I get it. But again, there's a bigger game to be played. The bigger game is they want liquidity into the system. And to do it, you're going to have to have a regime change. And that creates a macro spasm. As we just heard, Raul Powell passionately analyzed the pivotal roles of the yen and the US dollar in the current market turmoil. Let's delve further into his bold predictions for the future of global liquidity. Powell doesn't hold back as he describes the magic setup created by the Bank of Japan's policies, which have turned the yen into a financial wrecking ball. This situation has driven Japanese investors to seek higher yields globally, strengthening the US dollar and creating unique market dynamics. Powell's signature blend of economic analysis and no-nonsense commentary paints a vivid picture of a financial system in flux. Now, let's hear more from Roe Powell on the future of our markets, the intricacies of this magic setup, and the global liquidity flows that are reshaping investment landscapes worldwide. Okay, so let's go. Now, the business cycle. Remember I said, well, the business cycle is bottoming and not peaking. I know there's a lot of noise about recession, recession, recession. A lot of that was priced in last uh, back in 2022 from the forward-looking indicators. What we've got is the cyclical elements of the of the economy, car sales and stuff that are slow, miners and stuff that are driven by the business cycle. The business cycle is still chopping. Now people say, "Yeah, but look, it it rolled down." Yes, it did roll down. It happens at every low of every cycle. You tend to have this correction, and that's where we are now. So you can see the last few. Well, the last two decades worth, you get this secondary dip before you get the recovery. So that's where I think we are now. It's kind of noise because most of the markets I concentrate on, crypto and technology, are priced off liquidity conditions and financial conditions. But we are at the relatively slow point of the economy where rate cuts are now kind of preordained. And the things that back it up are things like unemployment. I've been talking for a while that unemployment should rise. I don't think it's going to go super crazy. But now we're at the point where we're beyond the unemployment rate of the most um, negative Fed member. So obviously, the signal is there to cut rates, and the Fed have made that clear. Maybe they come sooner, maybe they don't, maybe they inject liquidity in different ways. But either way, unemployment has been rising And that is a key factor for the Fed. And inflation has been falling, which is the key factor for the Fed. So it's green lights all round to cut rates. And cut rates allows liquidity to come in to the system. So what happened is this mix of the um, DXY, which is the dollar, and the 10-year bond yields and Fed rate cuts all came from the Fed starting to suddenly say, well, the market's starting to realize the Fed were going to change course. And then the Fed changing course by saying they're probably going to cut at the next meeting. And that set this whole thing off. Now, there's a lot of rate cuts priced in. They weren't priced in before, but I think they're more correct in how they're pricing things in. Will it work exactly how the markets are suggesting? I don't know. But I think rates come down to 2.5% or lower in this cycle. If you remember, the everything code needs low rates because you have to refi the $10 trillion of debt. So you need low rates to do that and liquidity to pay the interest payments on the prior cycle's debt, which is why the everything code is so important in this and why we keep repeating the same old cycle. It's because it's about paying the refinancing costs of the debt, and we're deep into the refi cycle. So I've been explaining for a while, the Fed and all the central banks need low rates. The Treasury needs liquidity within which to roll that and also to monetize the previous interest payments. That monetization of interest payments is what drives the liquidity cycle and the debasement cycle, which drives up assets. Also, as the business cycle bottoms, people have more money, businesses have more money, gets reinvested, people invest more, and that builds on a cycle. Things like emerging markets do well when the when the dollar weakens. So therefore, profits get reinvested in the system and the virtuous cycle of macro summer and macro fall play out. And that should play out all the way into the end of 2025. Okay. Financial conditions are really important. So financial conditions lead the ISM, the business cycle, by nine months. So we've been ripping higher in financial conditions for a while now with some pauses en route. 
if you look at the current pause in the ISM, it matches the pause we had in financial conditions nine months ago. But now it's been going higher. This financial conditions index doesn't take into account the fall in yields that happened this morning and the fall in the dollar. So by the end of the week, if those stick, we should see this even higher. But overall, as the dollar weakens and rates come down, financial conditions will continue to ease, and that will continue to lead the business cycle nine months from now. Also, it, what the, the financial conditions is, is really gives you a, a composite of all the countries with their leading indicators rising. So it leads somewhat, and it's telling you that economic recovery is on the cards. And that's what these OECD uh, composite leading indicators are. They're showing you that global economy is recovering and financial conditions is what causes it to recover, which is important because that's where profits come from. That's where earnings come from in corporations. That's where household earnings comes from. That's where investment comes from. Money goes into the stock market. All of those things are driven by this business cycle. Okay. When we look at uh, the global liquidity, you hear about me talk about global liquidity a lot. A lot. Well, you see, financial conditions lead it. The central banks pretty much act on the financial conditions. So there's a five-month lead. So you can see financial conditions on, um, on, on this weekly basis have been chopping around a bit, but are moving higher. And that should mean global liquidity should follow. And financial conditions should be breaking out once the numbers are updated. And that will have the um, liquidity also rising. So liquidity is the prerequisite for markets to rise. In this electrifying discussion, Pal highlights how the yen's collapse and the US dollar's strength are reshaping global markets. He offers an optimistic yet cautious perspective on navigating these turbulent times and suggests ways to leverage the magic setup for strategic investments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on a few questions. How do you think the yen's continued weakness will impact your investment strategy in the coming year? Do you believe the strengthening U.S. dollar will lead to a global recession, or could it create opportunities in certain markets? For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.